Yeah. So uh, the let before we before I go into the uh, talk matter, let's set the spirit of the talk. So I'll stick to illustrating the matter of the title throughout the talk to different models, which I won't go into details of. So you don't expect me to describe the models in details, but I'll just illustrate these things in different different scenarios. And this is a collaboration with uh, several people. Started with uh, my col collaborators at Is Hotacharya, Calcutta University, as Dasgupta Calcutta University. Ushmi Haldar is a grad student. Art Moishner from MPIPKS and Frank Pullman from TU Munich and Sito Hirai in MPIPKS. So. Uh, Let's start with a very basic recapitulation of a quantum phase transition. So basically, you have a Hamiltonian at zero temperature, and you tune a parameter in the Hamiltonian, and it goes from one phase to the other, meaning the ground state properties change non-analytically at some point of time. For, for example, take this Ising model, or properly uh, proper pronounced Ising model, which has xx interaction nearest neighbor, and a Z field, which basically uh, 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 and it, uh, doesn't commute with these terms. So if, if these terms are classical, they would try to align the system, this uh, easing spin in x directions, and this, this field is going to destroy this alignment, creating the superpositions of them. And the ground state, uh, for a very large value of these, the ground state ends up aligned in z direction almost, and that's the superposition of all of them, and the uh, x axis magnetization is zero. So here it is as a function of h. So the Transition happens because at a very sharp point, this magnetization goes to exactly zero in the thermodynamic limit and then stays to zero as we increase this. And then uh, uh, the telltale signature of this uh, transition is, uh, for example, several kinds of non analyticities which are well known. For example, the gap for a particular momentum mode goes to zero in this fashion, and for corresponding relaxation time diverges. The magnetization shows a kink-like behavior at this point, which is given here. Similarly, the uh, correlation length diverges in particular manner. These are the universal, uh, very well-known signature uh, of non-analyticity in a standard point of this transition. But as you go beyond the ground state, beyond the ground state in terms of energy, put some energy density in your system, finite energy density in, in your system. You can canonically do it by putting a finite temperature. What you expect these divergences just disappears, particularly in 1D systems. So as you see, this critical, uh, this correlation length, they, have, uh, they are all finite at finite temperature, and magnetization is just zero. So these non analyticities typically uh, disappears if you put some finite energy density in the system. And for the local operators, this is, in general, can be, uh, can be uh, seen by just uh, considering the free energy which has no non analyticity at finite temperature with respect to lambda. So no local observable has any non analytic behavior as you change this lambda para tuning parameter through the critical point. So this is uh, what we know about it. But then there is, a, uh, there is a scenario called eigenstate thermalization hypothesis, which indicates that even a single eigenstate of a Hamiltonian might have a lot of information about the entire spectrum and in fact, about the enter Hamiltonian. So the question is whether, in some sense, these signatures of a ground state non cities is actually propagated to the higher excited states. Is there some some way? We don't see in the see in this uh, see this in the equilibrium scenario, but perhaps we can generate non-equilibrium states, which are still which are still have finite energy densities, and we in this kind of states we might uh, see these kind of signatures. Sorry? Well, uh, the transition has to be a gap closing transition. So, for, for example, the Ising model, if you go back, so there is a gap only for the k mode, uh, the momentum mode k equal to 0 or pi, depending on is j equal to plus or minus hz. So, the gap closes that particular point in the parameter, for parameter value, that is the transition point. So, in order to do that, we just Consider this simple protocol. We take a Hamiltonian and change the parameter lambda. 
And as we tune the parameter lambda, there is a critical value of lambda, lambda equal to lambda c, when there is a transition, as you said, there is a gap closing. So now the protocol is this. You set your initial value of lambda here, take the ground state of this Hamiltonian, lambda i, call, call it lambda i, initial value. So take the Hamiltonian h lambda i, and take the ground state of that Hamiltonian. Now do a small quench of size r, and wait there for a very, very long time tau. Typically time going to infinity in principle. And then you create a state which is highly excited because you have done a finite quench starting from a ground step. And then you measure all these quantities, local operators on this side tau. So that's the protocol. So you do a quench lambda i to lambda f, wait there for a long time, and measure the observables on the asymptotic states. And then you plot the observables as the function of lambda f. So we apply this first in the xy chain. We chose xy chain because it's a, it's a, it has reasonable, uh, reasonably versatile phase diagram. So there is this easing transition lines, as I said. Uh, uh, which uh, and, the or, uh, and the ordering is in the x and y directions, and then also there is an isotropic transition line, which sets the relative strength between x and y interactions. Uh, the easing model comes up if you put uh, gamma equal to one, then x, x, this y y term disappears. So there are two kinds of transition lines, and in that setup, you can do squinch in very different directions. For, for example, you can start your Hamiltonian, uh, your initial state from here, and go along this line changing your parameters, which is a combination of gamma and AC now, along this direction, and that's your quench direction. And you want to cross the critical line and measure, and for after each quench, you wait a long, long time and for each lambda f, and you, uh, and you plot your observables as a function of lambda f. Now, before we uh, see the results, let's consider some general properties of this state. First, these states have finite energy densities compared to the ground state. And more importantly, this is, these have extensive entanglement entropy that can be easily proved, which means these are no way ground state of any local Hamiltonian. They are really excited states in this sense. And of course, these states are all paramagnetic. These psi taus are all paramagnetic. There is no X or Y order in these states. So, so, as a, so in this work, for some reason, we measured this quantity the initial Hamiltonian, and we called it the energy absorption. So we, for some reason, uh, let's just concentrate in this particular observable. It's a local observable, the initial Hamiltonian. But this results typically holds for, uh, this kind of results typically holds for any local observable, as we will see in our later slides. So what we see very interestingly, for very large quenches, even for very large quenches, as a function of lambda f, this, this quantity shows a kink-like structure here. So that means you are now measuring quantities in a family of states, which are paramagnetic, have finite energy densities, have extensive entropy, yet that remembers that down there, in the ground state, there is a singularity. So this is, uh, this is for different uh, directions of the quench. So as I, it's charted here, but it's not important. The deals are not important. These are just for diff from different directions in the phase, direct, uh, phase, phase diagram, as I said, changing delta and your initial points. And they look pretty non-universal. Uh, it depends highly on which directions you cross the axis. The axis are pinned by the universality classes, of course. But uh, the details of these uh, structures uh, apparently doesn't care about that. So it's, it looks pretty non apparently non-universal. So uh, these, are, these are results for different values of tau. This tau infinity can be calculated analytically in this case, and there are other values of tau showing that uh, after some, ta some finite tau, it, uh, it, uh, it shows a reasonably strong similarity here. Note that this is, uh, uh, this is a bit different from uh, recently uh, studied uh, problems, which are pretty related. One is this dynamical phase transition, where people quench some system, and they see this kind of non analyticities in real-time response. However, as we will show, this happens only, these signatures only uh, betrays the critical point. 
it doesn't show any non-analyticity if you went within a phase. Uh, or it doesn't show a non-analyticity. Uh, uh, when there is a critical point, it will always show a non-analyticity, uh, which is in contrast to the dynamical phase transition, where you can actually have cast-like structure if you even with, uh, do quenches even with, 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 within, within a phase. And this is also different from a set of models where these uh, higher excited phase transitions are observed in, uh, due to uh, divergent uh, density of states. Uh, I think uh, many people studied it, including uh, uh, Liha here. Those are very interesting things, but this is quite distinct from that. So we can do double quenches across two critical lines, and then two distinct signatures appears like this. <coughs> so a little bit of mathematics I'll flash. So just to grasp how to how we analyze this signature and ascertain this uh, the statement which I said. So we take this model to Jordan Wigner transformation plus Fourier transform, which is standard, and go to a collection of two-level system in the momentum space. And then you can write down this energy of E apps, the quantity I was uh, showing in the previous slide, in quadrature, uh, integral over k. And then you go to the complex plane, and then you have this, this form of integrals. So the integrals are uh, uh, of this form where this, uh, this numerator is analytic in uh, your uh, final parameters, so we are uh, trying to see the non analyticity with respect to these final parameters. Here are branch points, which depends only on the initial parameters, so they are not function of uh, your final parameters, so they stay put as you change the final parameter. And then there are poles that appears uh, uh, for the final, uh, as a function of final parameters. These are the poles that appears in final parameters. So there are two kinds of poles. So this kind of, actually four kinds of poles. So one by Z to F, one and two correspond to plus and minus sign here. They always stay inside the contour. And there are other poles, this one, Z to F, always stay outside the contour. So they doesn't essentially change the pole structure of within the contour. So they doesn't contribute to any non-analyticity. However, there are one by Z1 F and uh, kind of poles which are Inside when HF is lesser than one, one is the critical point, and outside when HF greater than one, an opposite happens with one by uh, Z, Z1F. So these poles moves in and out of this contour as you pass through the critical point. And that gives you the non analyticity here. So it, uh, and this, since it's a kink, you have two different kinds of, different kinds of function on two sides of your uh, axis, we cannot evaluate this integral because of these uh, nasty branch points, however, sorry. However, the differences, difference on the derivatives of these two things, which is, uh, which is a discontinuous jump, you can evaluate just by calculating the residues in these two cases, analytically. So, uh, so for this, we get the general expression of this jump in the derivatives uh, in this form, where M is the tan delta angle, as, as we said, this angle, as we said for different directions of quench. So, uh, so far we have just considered a model which has a local uh, order parameter characterizing the transition, but uh, it's not difficult to see that this can be extended to the cases where there are no local order parameters. So to illustrate that, we take this uh, so-called Schiffer-Hicker model, which is a, a which So well, we'll come to that, yeah. So yeah, so uh, as you said that there are structural similarities in integrable model, uh, particularly free fermionic models. So yeah, that's an open question whether in, uh, we can see these kind of things in uh, better integrable system, but uh, it seems to be very difficult. So we did uh, numerical things on non-integrable cases, which, uh, which is basically done by my student Ushmi, uh, and I'll come to it later. So uh, these kind of protocols can also be used to detect uh, phase transitions measuring local densities, where the nature of the transition is also topological, and then there is no local order parameters. So this is a uh, this is a simple model where there there is just hoppings, and there is no uh, on-site potential or even interaction. So uh, it's a staggered hopping. So a unit cell is uh, made up of two atoms. So it's a two-band model. 
and uh, uh, our electron hops from here to there between the two sides of a single cell or from two different, between two different sides of uh, two different unit cells. So they're different and uh, we choose, uh, choose this notation here. So this kind of staggered hopping model uh, uh, opens up a gap, of course, in the bulk and it has this uh, so-called uh, chiral symmetry which is ensured by the absence of on-site potential. And then that uh, ensures that if you uh, put, uh, put uh, disorder in these hoppings, it, uh, the basic features, the topological features of these things doesn't change much. That means the number of uh, H state that appears uh, uh, and the number of zero modes pin to, uh, pin to, uh, pin to those H states, uh, uh, some number of modes pin to zero energy doesn't change. Uh, so we can just write down this Hamiltonian similarly in this case, in momentum space like this. And then uh, the transition is, is the following. So when lambda is lesser than one, there are these heat gap states, which is zero energy. And at uh, lambda equal to one, there is a gap closing. And lambda greater than one, it opens up at these uh, H states that disappear. So this can be also viewed uh, as a change in winding number in the K space. So if you write down this uh, HK in this form, uh, this, this is the Hamiltonian in the K space. And we change K from minus pi to plus pi, depict the circle of radius lambda at the center at one zero, so, uh, dx equal to one and dy equal to zero. So these kind of circles remain uh, confined in a, in, a, in, a, in a plane. I mean, it's a, it's a, it, this kind of path remains confined in a plane because of there, there is no on-site potentials. So you can uh, define this kind of quantities. And as you can see that if lambda is lesser than zero, lesser than one, it doesn't include the origin. But at, at circle radius increases, at some point of time, if it's lambda greater than one, it includes, includes the origin. So winding number jumps from zero to one, corresponding to these uh, two different states uh, presented here. So in this model, uh, we can start with a thermal state, as we did, our initial state is a is a thermal state instead of a ground state. And when, then we quench to, uh, to different kind of final parameters. Final parameter is lambda here, of course. And uh, we calculated, uh, so the fi final state uh, diagonal density matrix looks like, looks like that. These are the thermal weights. And observables are just a trace on the final density matrix. And here also, we see similar kinds of cusp-like behaviors. So we, uh, if it, it's lambda. Lambda is, lambda equal to one is a critical point. So we start from lambda less than one and then we keep on doing quenches and then cross another one. So, uh, so we can see the signature survives when their initial state are not thermal, I mean, uh, not uh, ground state, but thermal states, as Anatoly also indicated. And even, but at infinite temperature, of course, everything flattens out. But uh, we also measured uh, on-site correlators, local on-site correlators on these things. And uh, these are the finite time evolution results, which are pretty sharp or very small times, indicating that uh, this might be a useful tool to detect uh, topological transitions in, uh, in, in experimental systems. So the idea is, uh, 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 the basic idea is you are measuring densities in the bulk and nothing else. These are just correlators, densities in the bulk, and you are detecting a topological transition. Here is a real-time scenario which shows these cusps which are reminiscent, which are basically these dynamical phase transitions. Where these kinks appear. Right. So, but these are, as, as you said, winding number is not well-defined on this state as such. So it's a highly non-equilibrium state. In the ground state, that is, that is the value of lambda where the winding number And we can try to understand this in terms of uh, 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 the Gibbs ensemble. Because as we know, if you quench and stay, uh, stay for a very long time there, you are going to reach a generalized Gibbs ensemble. So the question is, this, this, these factors are all analytic. So then where does the non-analytic city enters? Basically, these non-analytic centers in the Lagrange multipliers, which are equivalent to temperature. There are many kinds of Lagrange multipliers in this uh, 
this Gibbs ensemble. There are extensive number of them. And these, in this Lagrange multiplier, as a function of your final quench parameter, this non-electricity enters. So basically, if you, uh, if you think in terms of temperature, you keep on quenching, uh, keep your quenching on and pass through a critical point, your temperature, effective final temperature, that will show a non-electricity as a function of your parameter. And for the easing model, one can calculate exactly and show these beta ends, different uh, Lagrange multipliers, indeed shows a non-electricity at the, at, the, at the critical point. Well, uh, uh, all the properties of topological phases doesn't vanish in this particular, particularly simple model, but uh, my idea is, uh, the idea is, uh, for example, uh, if you, if you uh, measure, if you try to measure uh, local order, local parameters in the bulk, local densities in the bulk, it doesn't say anything about the topological phase. But here you are doing exactly that. You're just measuring local correlators. It doesn't know anything about the boundary. It doesn't know anything about the current state, current in the current-like things. Like it doesn't know about the chart number. For example, if you uh, take a honeycomb uh, Holden model and do the quench, the chart number doesn't change. But you can look at the local quantities. There you see the edge state will develop, but then you have to go to the edge to know th know that there is a transition from the dynamics. Here you don't do that. We just stay in the bulk measure some lo local quantity, and you, from that you read out that there is a transition. And that holds even the transition is topological. It's not particularly that holds for the topological thing only, or it uh, reflects the transition is topological. It doesn't do that. But it just uh, undermines that there is no local order parameter. So now we come to Anatoly's question. So we have this non integrable model. Uh, this is a, a next nearest neighbor interaction using model. There is this four fermionic term here. If you go to the fermion picture, and we do this, uh, uh, let let me just briefly say the relevant part of the phase diagram. So this is the using model plus uh, anti antiferromagnetic term. So if you uh, if you have a reasonable value of this uh, uh, transverse field, which is not very high, then there is a failure to para transition if you just tune the strength of this antiferromagnetic term. So this is a transition line which is most well known since we are trying our hands on a new, I mean, our, our theory in a new kind of scenario, so we chose this most well known line. It's known very accurately from quantum Monte Carlo and in this area from uh, real space RG. Uh, so this is the uh, history of this line. So we do the same thing here and what we get, uh, use uh, ITVD for infinite system sizes, but finite times. Uh, I am ignorant about this technique. It is entirely mastered by my grad student, Oshmi, and if you have any question, you should ask her, you see her around. What we see is that, in fact, if you measure this thing, this is a lo local correlator we measured, you see, in fact, see a non electricity here at this point. It's not very visible because it's a clutter of lines, but you can take the first derivative of it, and as you see, the time here is very, very tiny. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 25. That's, that's all we can do after months of uh, numerics. And as you see, as we expect, if there is a kink, the derivative should go something like a delta function. And as you increase the time, it's rapidly going sharp towards the delta function. And this model, this quench is on the interaction. So interaction driven quench. So there is no, uh, uh, no ambiguity about the uh, non integrability of this model. And we are still trying to improve on the precisions of the result. Most likely, we have come to a saturation. We'll soon put it up. And if we can see another interesting aspect, which I'm going to discuss now, we see that if you put stronger pulse, your pulse height are stronger, that means you change your initial value of comma. You have put a bigger pulse. You are, you are not close to the critical point. You are going farther away from the critical point and put a bigger pulse in the system. That certainly implies you more pump more energy in the system at the critical in the critical spectrum. And the signature becomes stronger. It's 
become sharper here. This uh, sharpness of this thing is basically an indicator of how strong the non-LGCD is. And the stronger signatures obtained uh, for stronger pulses. This we also uh, have seen uh, analytically for the, uh, for, the, for the Ising model, where we do the analytics, et cetera. Well, this, these states are actually quite messy. You couldn't, we try to fit temperature to it. It doesn't fit very well. So here we started from the ground state. Right, yeah, you cannot, we cannot thermalize this state uh, for this kind of algorithms. You could do that perhaps using this ancillary DMRG technique if you're trying to do that, but uh, uh, start with the ground state, do a finite quench, go to a finite energy density, when we see the energy density finite and things are basically limited by the size of the uh, bond dimension in this kind of algorithms. Yeah. So we fit these things uh, as one by tau pretty naively. And from the, uh, this fitting, we just extracted the critical point. And this is the blue line is the line uh, which, is the, uh, which is known. And these are the non-equilibrium reproduction of this phase line. So that brings to the conclusion of this talk. We have shown strong non analytic signature of ground state. Quantum phase transitions are imprinted on family of highly excited paramagnetic non equilibrium states. The signatures appear in local observables me measured over that family. People question what ensures the existence of such signatures in highly excited state. Locality of the Hamiltonian and EH perhaps implies very Every eigenstate has information of the entire Hamiltonian to some extent, certainly not all of it. The question is how much it is. The question is whether these kind of signatures also contain information about the universality class of the systems, which we could not decipher so far. This can be used to detect any gap closing transition local, using local observables in the bulk, interestingly, even when the transitions are topological. What about the signatures in other, with, when, the, uh, when the transitions are not second order? We also always considered so for the second order transitions. And quench isn't only the only non-equilibrium protocol. So you can basically, the question is non-equilibrium states might inherit these uh, signatures. So we can generate them under different other kinds of protocols, which leads to some kind of asymptotic states. So the question is that might open up a very interesting uh, uh, experimental uh, possibilities where you can detect the ground state phase transition without going to really close to zero temperature and using some non equilibrium protocol which generates excited states and read them off from there. So thanks for your attention. And this is our institute. So even the weak disorder will destroy this signature if you add some weak disorder to your system? Uh, uh, well, uh, there are similar studies for disorder models, but uh, uh, after these things, but these states, these states are all, all of them are, even the higher excited states have these transitions, like these uh, quasi periodic, quasi periodic models, like Aubrey Andre type models. So in that case, these uh, transitions, uh, this signature is trivial because all of the eigenstates already have this signature in them imprinted. If you are saying if you want to see these transitions in a system where you have small disorder and you have a shift in the critical point due to Griffith effect or something, so I honestly don't know the answer. You have to see it. effects in a family yeah. excited states right. characterization of that family what yeah so this family is characterized the final value of your with the initial quench parameter parameter lambda f and then you wait there to create the ensemble which gives that parameter value by the it's your procedure for creating.
creating right the fact is that it is parameter existed because it is created very complex for example in this uh, in these uh, parameters which are the temperature equivalents this lagrange multipliers as a function of lambda f but they are going to be complicated functions Uh, at least if you don't wait for very, very long time, sometimes even in ergodic systems, you can ap approximately describe the system through generalized Gibbs ensemble, this pre-thermalized state, and so on. Uh, maybe with somewhat rest intervals of motion. And Just wonder if you thought about, no, I'm the, trying to understand. Yeah, singular yeah. so, but, uh, but our starting point itself is a many-body state. There is no generalized Gibbs ensemble, but we start with, the, our initial state is already a many-body state. I understand, yeah. But yeah, so normally, if you do a quench in weekly, say, non-integrable systems. This is not a weekly non-integrable system. That's the point. So our K is already strong enough, is large enough. To, to, to the begin, your lambda i is large enough so that it's not, you have an integrable one and then putting something. We're just quenching kappa from a value of 0.5 to 0.1 compared to one, right? So it's pretty ergodic. So there was this paper by Tarun Grover, which says, can you extract the whole Hamiltonian from a single eigenstate of an yeah, Tarun, Yeah, Tarun had these ideas at some point of time, I think, yeah. Yeah, so this is like uh, kind of in the similar. Story. Yeah, it, I will. This, this paper came before Tarun's paper. But uh, yeah, we had the similar kind of physical intuition which led us to these kind of questions. And in that, so following up on Tarun's uh, analysis, he could recover the full density matrix of the system, right? Starting from a eigenstate. Yeah, so, so this, this should describe only local observables, as I said. Yes, yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, okay, so, but you cannot go beyond this local. Yeah, we, we should not be able to go beyond the local things, for example. Uh, in general, right? For example, you might construct a Hamiltonian with random projectors. Mm. Yeah. Or if you measure a very non-local Hamiltonian, non-local observables. But you can extract the powers of density matrix. Right, but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not sure whether, well, for, if you put some restrictions on the locality of the Hamiltonian, then what, what you are saying is correct. But if you just con decide to construct a Hamiltonian by choosing random projectors, you can do that, right? It's still a Hermitian operator. You can call it a Hamiltonian. And of course, one state doesn't have anything to do with the other. Yeah. So knowing one state doesn't give you any information. So the subtle question is whether locality poses some, how much the condition of locality restricts this and relates the eigenstates. In the projector case, it may not be even ergodic, right? Because yeah, I mean, I'm talking about, in, uh, talking in general, yeah. That's what I'm saying. So the idea is if you take a local Hamiltonian, then a lot of information of the ground state can actually be in the higher excited states. 